Welcome to another video. In this video, we will discuss an important use case or concept in Dataverse called as uh, change tracking. Most of the times when you keep data synchronized with external systems in combination with Dataverse, then it requires a change track concept by which you can detect any change in your Dataverse system record and if there is any change you can trigger the changes to your external system the point here is you can get the changed data from a certain timestamp to external party and you can also get the last changed records or changed records since the last time you have synchronized so that you can get delta changes so mostly change tracking is used to synchronize the data of dataverse with external systems so how to enable that and how to use this use case let us understand let's say i have a entity called as medicines in medicines we have five records right and i want to detect how many records i want to first read all records to synchronize with external system then i will keep track of what data changes so that i will push it to the external party so to enable change tracking you have to first go to the solution and go to the entity navigate to the property window and in the property you have to enable the track change once you enable the track change feature you cannot disable it so while creating the record decide whether you have to enable it for change tracking or not because it cannot be enabled once it is cannot be disabled once it is enabled right now once you enable this it is taking time to load but it's okay you can again reinitiate the property now here if you scroll down you'll find that option you can use classic mode also to enable change tracking otherwise you can use this uh, modern window also modern screen let me refresh once because sometimes if your screen is uh, uh, very slow it uh, takes time to load let me replace the solution and navigate to the property window. Any table that you want to synchronize with other system, external system that requires a change tracking, you have to enable it. So go to the table first, and in the table, you have to navigate to the property. And you will find that option let us wait till it is loading because you do not have any other option depending on your system slowness and fastness it will load actually okay so you have to wait till the options are open now you see if you go to advanced options you will find there is an option called as change tracking this track change changes this is already enabled at the time of entity creation i have enabled this that's why i cannot disable this so i can use this entity to uh, to use this track changes feature right so i have created a c sharp code a console application where i am using i am calling the organization service okay to perform the operation of track change and here I have written the code. I have written the code to get the entity change information. You have to use retrieve entity change response object. And this entity change, retrieve entity change re request need to be processed so that it will get a response. So retrieve entity change response equal to null initially. And the string data version equal to null. Whenever you first load or first synchronize all data, you have to pass data version as null. And if you want to retrieve all columns for that record, you can use column set, column equal new column set true. Otherwise, you can mention the column names here. What columns you want to synchronize, you can define here with comma separated. True means all columns. Next, we define a entity retrieve entity change request object and pass this information. Which entity, which columns, right? So retrieve entity change request, request equal to new retrieve entity change request. And remember, you have to add the reference of Microsoft SDK. 
okay you can use NuGet package to attach that so retrieve and change retrieve entity change request request equal to new retrieve entity change request entity name equal to my entity that i want to uh, retrieve data changes which columns i want to retrieve and here you need to you, you, you need to pass page information which page number you want to start reading how many records you want to retrieve in one page and do you want to return the total record count or not if you use return total record count true then it will also return the total count that is changed then data version in the data version initially you have to pass null as we have assigned null here because at the first run i want to get all records next time i want to change this data version with something else because data version is generated when you uh, execute this request and in the change response object uh, it will find the new data version value so every time you run you have to add the new data version picked from the response okay and response equal to retrieve entity changes response organization service dot execute request now this code will execute locally and retrieve all data changes if it is if data version is null it will return all data if data version is something or that the last timestamp is given here it will get changed data here i have taken a variable to check how many records are changed i mean how to get that response entity changes changes dot count this will get how many records are changed or impacted since the last time you have synchronized then i am i have taken a, a variable called as data var to capture the data token this response entity changes data token is the timestamp or a tag you can say which identifies when it was run last or when it was synchronized last so let us run it first time so i want to run it first time okay by passing data version is null so that it will fetch all data so let me give a breakpoint here and start debugging now when you run this project I'm expecting it should get five records because I have only five records okay and I want to pull initially all records and you see here when it is running the debugger is hit here and if I will mouse over the count now it is executed now the debugger will hit here and if I will mouse over to the count I will get the total number of records that is returned still working on now the debugger will hit immediately after processing this first it will get organization service then it will uh, execute this request in server yeah now the debugger is hit here now if i mouse over on count i should get the number five you see why i'm getting five because five records are there and i want to synchronize all records to my external party and you can get the details here if you mouse over on the response dot entity changes and in the changes property you will find all records 0 1 2 3 4 5 if you expand one by one you can get the type what is the type whether it is new or updated and whether it is new or updated so the type defines whether it is a new record or updated record and then you can get the data using this uh, options like if you want to get data you can go to response then entity changes changes then you can expand this so that you can get the data on the type new and updated entity you will expand this attribute and you can get the key and value pairs so these are the values of the record you see the name and who is created this what is the uh, dosage right all information is getting here so initially when i run this entity change request i am getting all records so count equal to 5 and here you see data token generated so copy this data token right and store it in a notepad now this is the data token received from my last run so stop this now you understand when I initially executed this request, 
I get all records and it generated a timestamp. Now when I will next run, I have to pass this data token timestamp to the data version. Instead of null, I will pass this one because I want to check how many records are changed after this timestamp, right? Now let me change something and read on this code using last run timestamp. Let me go here and update one record. Let me open this and update the name field test sample, okay, and save it. Now I have updated a record in medicine master entity now when i will run this code this now using this timestamp or data version i should get count one because one record is updated right so let me check that go here and rerun again mind it the data version is mentioned here this was received from the previous run data token now run it and test this again and check the count Now the application is running and once it's running, it will now get the information in the count. So let us mouse over on the count, see how many records are coming. I'm expecting it will return only one because I have updated one record uh, in system. So if you mouse over, you will get one record, you see. And if you go to the response also in the quick watch, in entity changes, you will find count one. Why it is count one? Because only one record is updated. If you expand the change type, here you will find the change type is new or updated record. And you can get the data using this new updated entity attribute. And here you can see how many records are how many attributes are returning. If you use value. You can check this is the value that is updated, right? The name, right? Now, here also it will generate another data token. You can store it. So, copy this and paste here. So, this is the second data token generated. You can stop it. Okay. Let me go here and delete one record. Let me delete this record. I don't want to delete this record, let me delete an existing record, this one. Okay. Now rerun the change tracking code using new timestamp. So I will take this timestamp, which was run last time, and use in my code. And try to run this and check how the count is impacting. Now it is executing. I'll go to the response and check the count. So you can schedule it. I mean, you can define some approach how you can run a uh, schedule uh, job to check the data changes and synchronize. Now, if you count mouse over on count, you'll see only one, right? Now let us check the response. In the response, you change entity count, entity changes. And in the changes, if you expand this zero, you will see the type is remove or deleted. So from my last run, I have just deleted one record because the updated record was captured in my previous run. But this time I have just deleted one record. That's why the track change is now giving me the data change of remove or deleted type. And which item is removed? You can expand it. The data is not available in the system, but here you can track. If you go to the uh, key attributes or you can click on uh, key attributes or values, you can see. Let me go to here.
extension data. These are the key attributes, attribute collection. This is the entity logical name, right? Click on the key attribute. These are the keys and values. There are three keys and values are available. So if you click on keys, you see when it is deleted and CRM creation, creation on, created on and archive delete. So these three records will be, informations will be captured. And these are the values, right? When it was deleted, all the information is available. But all, any other data will not be, not be available. Okay, in the response, it will just display which record, how many records are deleted. That's it, right? So this is how you can track changes for a dataverse record so that you can synchronize with other system. I hope you understand how it works. See you guys, I'll up, up, update this code in my blog so that you can uh, copy it. Thank you everyone watching this video. See you guys, bye.